Hey, how you doing? It's your man KW here. And with all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get cracking with a little bit of an unboxing. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Unboxed. That was quick. But what, what do we have inside the box? It's another box. A rather elongated box. And what could possibly be inside of this? Well, it says Lauer on the box there. So it's quite obviously lens because they're known for the lenses. Macro lenses. Wide angle macro lenses. But what could be in this? I mean... A long box could be a lot of wasted space, or it could be. Oh, I love that. This. But before we start, a quick thank you to Adorama for sponsoring this video, supporting creators with gear knowledge and inspiration to do what they love. So what's inside the box? We've got a instruction manual, sheet, <laughs> instruction sheet. Um, oh, it tells you how to open the box. How to open the box, instructions from within the box. Oh no, no, it's actually how to set the lock. Okay, fair enough. Why do you need a lock for this? Well, because, maybe, because it looks like a frickin' weapon. Look at that. Boom. Oh, it is quite a crazy looking thing, in fact. This is something that I first handled way back in 2016 at Hong Kong Airport. Of all places to handle something which looks rather weapon-like, it would have to be an airport, right? Needless to say, on that day, I got some rather vigorous rubber glove treatment. No, not really. Anyway, this is slightly different to that one. That was a prototype. If you look on the end right there, ooh, focus GH5. There, there we are, after, after, you know, an hour. What you see on the end of the barrel there is a whole load of LEDs because it's like a macro ring light. How does it get powered, I hear you ask? Well, by this. And then you attach, it kind of <laughs> looks, it kind of looks like a control for a massage chair. Power up, power down. Ah. Okay, and then I just need a... Here we go, that was convenient. So that's powered. Ooh, blue LEDs lock. <laughs> Can have it brighter. And that's on max power. Dim. Just in case you're wondering what the hell is this, it's a 24mm macro probe lens with built-in LED ring light. Why do you need it, I hear you ask? Well. It's maximum aperture is f14, so it's gonna be a bit dark, right? Even in good sunlight, you probably will need an extra bit of light. Also, because you're gonna be shooting so close to your subject with macro stuff, you're gonna have shadows. So it kind of helps to have lighting all around the barrel of the lens. And when I say barrel, it really does look like a gun barrel. To have lighting all around the gun barrel. What? What? What am I talking about? To have lighting all around the barrel of the lens so that you don't get any shadows. Let's mount this up. Right, so this comes in a Canon mount and of course, right now I don't have a Canon camera. Here we go. Manual focus, clickless aperture. Let's see who can scratch which one's front lens element first. No, actually focus road's quite long. But it's quite easy to go from one end to the other because the circumference is quite short. This is pretty cool. I mean, you'll need to carry some kind of power source with your power bank with you if you want to use this with the ring light. And really, I'd recommend it if you want to get nice looking shots. But I mean, this is an incredibly niche product. Why would you have... Oh, let me power this off first. Off! Just power off. There you go. Power off. Yeah, so why do you need something so neat? Such a special use lens. Well, when you're shooting wildlife with a macro lens, when you're prodding your camera into wildlife's face, they might get scared. This, I don't know if it's any less intimidating to be honest, but the theory is, is that you can poke this into crevices and holes or places where you don't or can't fit 
a camera or a conventional lens. In the end, my cat took a piss off on busy doing nothing approach. And no, I wasn't probing it inappropriately. The lens produces some nice images with good sharpness wide open at f14. And well, I didn't see any color fringing at all, nice. But I wouldn't say it's just a lens for macro wildlife photography. I mean, a lens of this shape and slimness, you could use, I mean, look, you could use this as a slider just by using it as a, a pull cue. And you can get some rather unique perspectives. <laughs> oh my God. Who knew I had fish scale for skin? Sorry for any of you watching this while eating, but <laughs> just be grateful that I didn't put this somewhere else in my body. I mean, I wouldn't really want to put this somewhere else in my body, right? Anyway, I reckon that's enough of my leg hair. And let's try something with this lens. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here is the setup for what I'm gonna do with this gun barrel lens. It's before we start with this, I wanna show you this, which is the other thing I've unboxed. It's a blind spot gear, hashtag not an ad. Got these two lovely lights with it, which I'm trying out with this setup. Got one here, one on top of the other camera. Pretty handy, LED lights, small, compact. That's it really, not much else to explain. It's a light. So yes, got this on the a7 III. This is the lower lens and I'm going to poke it in the water. Why? Stupid, right? No, because it's waterproof. At least the front bit is right up to here. It's got a waterproof tip and with the long barrel means you can keep your camera away from the water, which is just as well. It doesn't sound right, does it? Electricity and water, but this bit is waterproof. This bit isn't, so let's not get this, the USB part in the water. Otherwise, people might die, namely me. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that in the water, but what am I gonna do? So I have got Single cream, because it's creamy-licious and it tastes better, right? Um, some pipettes, yogurt pots, uh, another pipette, and um, that's, that's dinner. That goes over there. So I'm gonna do liquid flow, liquid drop, whatever you call it, videos. First of all, we gotta mix up our colors. Mix cream with food dye, suck it up in the pipette, and make sure the focus is preset, and then squeeze. All right, let's try two, drops at a time. If you're taking stills of liquid flow, you don't need to be this close. That's a whole nother video though. But this focuses down to two centimeters. So you might as well test this out up close and personal. It's like a Sony Bravia advert. Now this goes from two to one macro ratio up to infinity. Now the best performance is close up, not at infinity. So. It's not really much use if you want to use it as a landscape lens. You can if you want to, but it's going to be a bit softer. Gunky goodness. You might think that f14 is a bit too slow, but you need it when it focuses this close. The depth of field will be razor thin. Okay, let's dip our thing in there now. My end is dirty. Okay, maybe not the absolute best use for a lens like this. This is a unique macro lens that squeezes into the tightest of spots, wet or dry, thanks to its quite special physical attributes. Optically, it performs quite well. Bulk here is not amazing, but it's decently sharp up close. But this is mainly a lens you buy if you can see some use out of the unique shooting opportunities you can potentially get out of it, and not how it compares optically to other lenses. Not that there is another lens quite like this. That's the end of the liquid flow madness. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later. Oh. And also lastly, one big shout out to the sponsor of this video. If you ever feel like, mm, oh, I fancy a little bit of gear, or maybe you don't, then maybe check out the links below. That helps support this channel and keeps me going, doing this content. All right, thank you, see ya.